Okay, let's talk about the New York Regents Algebra 2 exam. And if you're watching this video, I assume you're a high school student in New York and you are preparing for the Algebra 2 Regents exam. And uh, the Regents exam in New York has been around for decades. I don't know exactly how long, but uh, uh, it's been around. It's probably <laughs> pretty likely if you're from New York, your family's from New York, that you're parents, uh, if they went to high school in New York, took the Regents exam, and probably even their parents. So uh, it's been around for a long, long time, and other states have uh, various versions of the Regents exam and the course exams, but um, for you there in New York, the Regents exam is a very, very important um, exam that you have to take seriously. I don't know exactly how it affects your uh, high school uh, graduation credits or requirements, um, but uh Either way, it's an important exam that you have to, you know, really study for. Uh, but before we get going, we're going to actually take a look at a practice problem um, here. It's something that you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you expect to do well on the New York Regions Algebra 2 exam. But let me go ahead and introduce myself first. My name is John. I'm the founder of Taba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed a lot of online math courses uh, to include a New York Regions Algebra 2 uh, test prep course. I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of this video if that's something you want to check out. But uh, what I have here is a nice little problem for you. Uh, let me go ahead and actually explain this and I'll give you an opportunity to, to uh, solve it and then we'll wrap up this video. So I have a function, okay, and what I want you to do is find the domain of this function. I'd like you to tell me the domain of this function in terms of the set of the real numbers, okay? So that should mean something to you. All right, so I want you to tell me the domain of this function, okay, with respect to the real numbers. Okay, so that being said, let me give you a little bit of hints here, okay, if you want to kind of think about it before you actually, um, you know, tackle this problem. Uh, one, we're talking about a function, okay, now if you remember, functions, you have something called domain, all right, and range of a function, okay, so I'm just trying to kind of, you know, uh, you know kind of waken up your memory a little bit if you kind of forgot about that, but functions are extremely important in uh, mathematics, and it's something that in um, algebra, you know, way back in algebra one, you were learning about how to find domain and range, etc. Now, this one here, this particular problem, is a little bit, I don't want to say sneaky, but it's something that you, you definitely should be able to handle at the Algebra 2 level. Okay, so once again, I want you to tell me the domain of this function here, okay, with respect to the real number set. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and you thought about this. Again, if you, if you got it right, that's excellent. Uh, and of course, I'm going to answer here in a second. Uh, but if you struggle with it, that's just, you know, feedback that you need to kind of go back and study. Okay, now, functions, huge topic, in, uh, again, in mathematics. It's something that, you know, uh, you should know a lot about at this level in your math education. Okay, all right, so let's get right to uh, the problem. All right, so here, when we're talking about functions in terms of the real number set, we, we first need to understand... Um, what is a domain? Well, the domain, okay, is all our allowable input values into a function. It's what we can put into a function, okay? The output is the range, okay? So just a quick review, and by the way, I can't turn this into a full lesson on functions. I, I would could go hours on that, okay? So that's not the point of this video, but the domain is what we're allowed to input into the function. Okay, what can I evaluate, you know, into this function? Now, what determines what I can input into this function? You, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, just put any old number into there. Yeah, that's true to a point, okay? Uh, when we're talking about the real number set, okay, uh, with respect to the real number set, then we need to discuss some things where we have problems, some numbers that give us problems in terms of the real number set. So, and actually in terms of just mathematics overall. So the first situation that we can't have, okay, if I put a number into this function and I end up with a situation where I 
have a zero in the denominator, okay, so it's like five over zero. Well, if I if whatever number I plugged into the function causes this uh, um, output, okay, well, this is a major problem, and that number that we plugged into is not allowed because in mathematics, zero in the denominator is undefined, okay? Just think about that for a second. Let's take a pizza and divide it by zero, okay? That makes no conceptual sense, right? So, uh, especially uh, in the real number set, well, in just the mathematics in general, this is undefined, okay? We don't know what to do with that. So any number that could cause that situation, we have to throw out of the domain, okay? So that's the first thing. Now the second thing is here we have a square root, okay? So uh, with in terms of the real number set, we can't take the square root of a negative number, okay? So for example, go into your calculator, if you had just a basic scientific calculator, and take the square root of negative 16, all right? If you do that, your calculator is going to come back with error, I don't understand what you're saying, because it's what number times itself is going to get you back to negative 16. Well, it's not going to be negative 4, because negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. So this situation here is what we call a complex number or an imaginary number. Now, if you remember, in this problem, I said find the domain with respect to the real number set. Okay, So in the real number set, we don't know what to do with this. So this is another situation that we can't have specifically we can't have, uh, uh, we, we can't take the square root of a negative number. So we gotta stay away from this, and we gotta stay away from uh, these two situations. So knowing that, we can now approach this problem and say, okay, what would cause, I'm gonna erase all this, what would cause either one of these scenarios? Well, let's just take a look at this here, okay? Well, the first thing is what happens if x was equal to zero. In other words, I was trying to find f of zero of this function. Well, this is gonna be equal to zero right here, this x, okay? So this zero times this is gonna make this whole denominator zero. So right off the bat, x equal uh, uh, to zero has to be, it, ha it cannot be part of the domain, okay? So we need to keep that in mind, all right? Now, the second thing is I have this square root here, okay? And it's uh, the square root of 2x plus 1. So mathematically, what we want to do is saying, okay, this cannot be negative, all right? This 2x plus 1, whatever x value we plug in, we can't, it can't turn out to be a negative value. So what we do is say, okay, give me all the x, x's such that 2x plus 1 is greater than 0, okay? Greater than 0. So greater than zero means it's non-negative. So we just go ahead and solve this basic inequality. So that's gonna be two x is greater than negative one or x is greater than negative one half, okay? So we have these two conditions here. So x cannot be equal to zero and x has to be greater than negative one half. And we can kind of see this graphically. Let's look at a number line on the x axis or just the regular number line here. Uh, so here is zero and here is negative one half. So I'm saying all x's are greater than negative one half right here, okay? Let's actually do this correctly. So it would be an open circle going in this direction, right? All these values are good for the domain, okay? Except zero, okay? So even though um, zero is greater than negative one half, we have to exclude it because we have a problem with it at this point as well. So the domain, okay, all other numbers in this direction with the exception of zero will be the domain. And there's various ways you can describe this, but uh, we'll just do it real basic here. So the domain would be all x's that are greater than negative one half with x uh, um, not equal to zero. Okay, so that's one way you can write it. We can use interval notation, and you need to know how to do that as well. But I really wanted just to focus you in on the concept of um, finding the domain. Very, very important. And looking at um, uh, what's going on with the graph of a function, you should be able to kind of see what the domain and range are as well. So this is very important stuff. And um, at the Algebra 2 level, you're thinking, well, well, once I get past this, I'll never see it again. 
not true. You'll see it again in pre-calculus. All these concepts, is, you know, as you continue to learn more and more math, they kind of carry along. Nothing really kind of just falls to the wayside when you learn math. Uh, everything does, you know, kind of build upon itself. So it's important that you, you know, don't think that, oh, I'm good with everything except for this one topic like logarithms and I'll never have to see that again, you know, uh, cause I'm taking my math course next year, et cetera, et cetera. Generally speaking in math, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to see these other topics come up in some form because you really can't afford to do that in math. Everything is important. Okay. So again, this, uh, video here, uh, wasn't designed to be a full lesson on, uh, range or domain. And uh, again, it would take hours to do. It's just a kind of a pop quiz. You can give you a little bit of uh, feedback where you're at. So if you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. If you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, well, I've been on YouTube for a good 12 years at the time of this uh, video and uh, basically posting content all the time. I actually have a lot of videos right now on my channel that could help you out if you like my teaching style with the New York Regents Algebra 2. So hopefully you consider subscribing. Um, again, uh, uh, I'm going to leave a link to my New York Regents Algebra 2 prep course. Super comprehensive. Uh, I'll leave the link to that in the description of this video if something you want to check out. And leave me some feedback. How is math going? Uh, was with, How was Algebra 2 this year? Again, if you're watching this video, you're thinking about the Regents exam, which means it's that you know, you're you know, at the end of, you're approaching the end of the academic school year. But uh, Algebra 2, a super, a super cool course I loved uh, uh, teaching at. I've taught, again, you know, middle and high school math. Very, very important course. What you learn in Algebra 2 is going to set the foundation for uh, pre-calculus. Okay, so, um, you know, take this course seriously. And uh, one other little tip, uh, something that just kind of came to mind, don't never get rid of your math notes. Okay, so whatever you're... What you you know if you're taking uh, really good notes keep them uh, for the future okay so at the end of the school year you know don't get rid of your stuff hold on to it because you know if it's well especially if it's good study material but anyways with that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your uh, high school studies and specifically on the new york regents algebra 2 exam hope this video helped you out thank you for your time and have a great day